first-round pick Roquan Smith had a rocky start to his career as a Chicago Bear. Less than two weeks after being selected eighth overall by GM Ryan Pace, Smith had his team-issued iPad stolen from his car along with several other personal items from his days as a Georgia Bulldog. Smith posted a video on May 9 thanking the athens Clark County, Georgia Police Department for ultimately recovering his stolen items, but the Bears took it one step further. Team's head of security sent a personal note to the officer who caught the perpetrator and returned Smith's possessions, even though the iPad wasn't one of them, the Bears remotely wiped Smith's iPad clean of all its data. Here's how athens Clark County Police responded to the Bears' note, thanks to the team a great note of thanks from the Chicago Bears to Officer Marcus McQuion and the entire ACCPD team for recovering Rock Juan Smith's Georgia gear. Officer McQuion lifted fingerprints from Smith's vehicle which helped recover the stolen property. On behalf of the department, we'll take a sideline pass, several deep dish pizzas from Pequods, and anything from the Skinny Piggy. Go Bears! Go Dogs! Smith starred at the University of Georgia and fittingly won the 2017 Butkus Award, given to the nation's top collegiate linebacker. He's expected to start alongside Danny Trevathan and should instantly make an already top 10 defense even better. The Bears have enough film of their own practices now to no longer have to watch tape of the Kansas City Chiefs running Matt Nagy's offense, providing another small step in the long installation process taking place during OTAs. Don't mistake this for a turning point in the Bears' understanding of Nagy's offense, though. It's more a signal that we're at the point of the offseason where the Bears have enough tape to evaluate at their own practices, and no longer have to watch other players doing it, it's not a milestone, but it's nice to be able to see your guys doing it, Nagy said. They understand that in Kansas City it took us five years to get to that point that we got to, that did not happen overnight. That develops in time. For Nagy, the off-season program, OTAs and mini-camps, has required plenty of patience given he's starting from square one after years of evolving his offense with the Chiefs. Nagy's goal is to have the Bears offense and defense on level footing come training camp, but until that's the case there will be more bad build days, as offensive coordinator Mark Helfrick put it after last Wednesday's practice. This is hardly a quick process, we're kind of at a pace right now where we have to at times pull back and say to yourself we're months into this thing, not years. Nagy said. The more reps we can get in practice, whether it's a walk though, splits, alignments, shifts, motions, the more they can see themselves doing it, that's what we want. So that the bears are. Just now watching themselves operate Nagy's offense instead of the Kansas City Chiefs is a good thing, though it also represents just how lengthy a learning process installing it will be. Because even if Mitch Trubisky has the concept of a play down, he still will have to execute it and know what to do with the ball against different defenses, coach Vic Fangio and his guys are. Doing a good job of mixing different coverages and disguising different looks, so for Mitchell to be able to see those looks on tape, he's building his own library right now within this offense. Nagy said. We don't have to watch Kansas City's offense anymore. We are building our library now and he's able to see how it works against our defense right now and try not to make those mistakes and make the correct adjustments. The last time the Bears had a truly dominant wide receiver was in 2013 when Alshon Jeffrey caught 89 passes for 1,421 yards and 7 touchdowns. A year earlier, Brandon Marshall dominated the NFL with 118 catches, 1,508 yards and 11 scores. While Jeffrey and Marshall's production will be hard to match in 2018, free agent prize Allen Robinson is expected to be a game-changer on a fence who will provide a similar kind of threat in the passing game. Robinson brings an impressive resume to the Bears. 
he was one of the league's best young receivers in 2015 when he had 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns on 80 catches. His 14 scores tied for best in the league that year, but with that one dominant season comes a head-scratching 2016. While most of the blame rightfully belongs to Blake Bortles' wild inaccuracy that season, Robinson managed only 883 yards on seven fewer catches than the year before. The big plays were gone. He scored only six touchdowns. Last season was a complete loss after he tore his ACL in Week 1. The Bears signed Robinson for the damage he did to NFL secondaries in 2015. And while it's unlikely he reaches those heights in his first year back from injury, he should provide enough production to justify the faith GM Ryan Pace placed in his surgically repaired knee. Robinson's value in fantasy football circles is all over the map. ESPN's Mike Clay predicted Robinson would end the year with 73 catches for 1,053 yards and 7 touchdowns. Roto World 7 Silva ranks Robinson 22nd among receivers, a value that translates to a WR2 for fantasy play. So what will Robinson's stat line be like in 2018? It's worth looking at the production receivers in Kansas City had while Matt Nagy was on the staff to get an idea of what his upside could be this year. Tyreek Hill was the top wideout for the Chiefs last season. He was targeted 105 times and had 75 catches for 1,183 yards and 7 scores. He's a different kind of player than Robinson and is more indicative of the potential for Taylor Gabriel. In 2015, Jeremy Macklin had 87 catches, 124 targets, for 1,088 yards and 8 touchdowns. No other receivers produced noteworthy numbers during Nagy's tenure with the Chiefs. In fact, it was tight end Travis Kelsey who was the primary weapon on offense. With all due respect to Trey Burton, that won't be the case in 2018. Robinson will get the lion's share of targets. How many that ends up being is the biggest question surrounding Robinson's value. There are a lot of talented options for Trubisky to choose from this season, including Burden, Gabriel, Anthony Miller and, quite possibly, Kevin White. At Eric Cohen out of the backfield, and the onus is on Robinson to make the most out of his looks. Robinson had 151 targets in both 2015 and 2016, a volume that would have ranked 6th in the NFL last season and ahead of superstars like Julio Jones, Falcons, and AJ. Green, Bengals. Kendall Wright led the Bears in targets last year with only 91. With somewhere around 125 targets likely coming Robinson's way and an estimated catch rate of roughly 60% in 2018, a season of 75 catches, 1,125 yards and 10 touchdowns is very much within his reach. His stats would resemble the no. One wide out from the Chiefs system over the last several seasons and would give the Bears the kind of playmaker they've missed for several seasons. Anything less than that kind of production would qualify as a disappointment for Pace's biggest off-season addition.